Hello my fellow Mushroom Game Enjoyers, my name is Marple Cello and welcome to a new episode of my Reboot Progression series. Last episode we done our first dailies for the Absolab set and also laid down some important groundwork for our Legion and the second chapter of my progression. This time we do the Black Heaven questline so we can unlock and fight Lotus at the end of it. I actually faced Lotus for the first time ever so taking him down was quite an experience. Along the way I'm gonna get some more level ups as well as some more upgrades for our equipment as I take part on the miracle time that was going on and spent all the meso I have collected so far. We also gonna take advantage of the burning event that's happening in the moment and level a character all the way to level 217. This character can be used as a boss mule in the future and we also can secure at least some of the rewards from the burning event. Further on we train another character to level 150 to increase our legion rank even more. If you guys enjoy the series make sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a new episode and if you like the videos give them a thumbs up, this really helps a ton. Thanks again for all your support guys, I really enjoy the small little chats we have down in the comments of these videos and of course all the helpful tips you guys give me, they really elevate the series to another level. But now get nice and comfy, grab some snacks and let's begin with this episode. I'm gonna start today with a little grinding session, there's an MVP train going on and I'm gonna take advantage of this. I already finished all my daily stuff for today and we can use the extra meso we gonna get while grinding. And we are done. It wasn't a train, rather just a single buff. Kinda sad, but we at least got like 8% experience and are over 2 billion meso now. The spa event is still going on so let me hop on my Evan and cap my coins. And we gonna get another level up for capping the coins. There we go, now let's finish this. I already went ahead and used up all my coins and for the 3 entries we got 5 levels. Now my Evan is level 193, but that's also probably everything we gonna get in terms of levels, at least for now, because the healing spy event is gonna end soon. Let's get to another thing I wanted to do way earlier, creating our burning character. As the burning event is still going on till the end of the month, I want to create my burning character before it ends. This event lets us level up a character pretty fast as we will get 3 levels each time we level up and this all the way till level 250. We also get some nice goodies along the way like some timed as well as permanent gear and even some arcane symbols that are already level 5. But let's get to the character I'm gonna burn, Blaster. This was the class I made on my old account before I stopped playing. Although I was more into learning the mechanics of this class than into playing the game itself, that's also why I didn't got really far before I stopped again. But here we are now. I really enjoy the playstyle of this class as it feels highly rewarding when you do everything right. And I'm sure it will be quite a fun adventure to get this guy to be a boss killing machine in the future. But having said that, for now I'm just gonna level him up, collect all the goodies we can and then get back on my Kali. We still have a lot more to do before we can even start to think about gearing our first boss mule. But now to my blaster. He is part of the resistance members and represents the warrior branch. The class has two types of resources we have to manage, bullets and the dynamo gorge as well as the animation cancel combo system. But I'm gonna get to that at a later point. Our adventure begins as we play hide and seek with our friends. While we are searching for them we crawl through a hole and end up in a strange lab. Inside we find countless children in glass pots. One of these kids then talks to us and introduces herself as Vita, she urges us to leave before the leading scientist Gallimere would appear, which must be quite hard from inside the water filled glass bubble. We tell her that we never heard of that guy and then she explains us that he's the reason why all the children are in glass pots and that he performs experiments on living subjects. Just then Gallimere and an officer called Schiller arrive. We overhear a conversation where Gallimere tells Schiller that everything is going according to his plan and that the androids, the black wanted would be done soon. This guy plays a pretty important role for the whole Black Heaven storyline by the way. Then he also teases that his actual plan is something way bigger than a simple android. While these two were talking a power surge caused the lights in the lab to flicker. The two Blackwing members go to investigate and we use the chance to escape but not before rescuing Vita along the way. We were already pretty close to the outskirts of Edelstein but then Schiller appeared to capture Vita and ourselves. 
apparently we saw too much and now also should become a new test subject. Suddenly a airship appears and a resistance member with the codename J drops down to rescue both of us. He takes Vita with him and we are told to go back into town. Eager to join the resistance we ask J how we can be a part of it and he tells us to get stronger. And on our quest to become stronger we help different people around the town of Edelstein. After helping every single one of them we get an invitation that brings us to the resistance secret place where we see that all the people we helped before are also resistance members. Now we can finally become a blaster. This is also the part where the tutorial ends and we are now free to go where we want. I also already claimed the first hyper burning reward. This contains some of the usual equipment boxes we also got with our Kali. In addition we also get a title that can be used once we reach level 200. And that's also when we are able to claim the next rewards by the way. To reach level 30 I used my usual go to maps, Golem Temple and North Forest and because this is a burning character this only took me 7 minutes. We are level 30 and that means it's time for the job change. In this quest we are called back to Edelstein. Back at the secret base we are tasked to get a report from a Blackwing member at the Edelstein airport. To our surprise the Blackwing agent we have to face is Schiller and after beating him we not only get our revenge for what he did to Vita and the other children we also get the report and are able to do our job change. Now I'm gonna do my usual routine and do all the team dungeons or at least some of them. I have not even finished Fairy Academy and we are already level 61 and this means I can do the next job change. For this we are once again called to the secret plaza for a special mission from our instructor. He then explains to us that we have to infiltrate the power plant inside the Werner mines. These places both rightfully belong to the citizens of Edelstein but the Black Wings took them over. And to make things even worse they built an energy conduction device to divert power away from the city for their own unknown purposes. Because the Black Wings are now holding the people of Edelstein hostage by threatening to blow up the power plant along with the whole city our only option is to destroy the energy conduction device so the people of Edelstein at least get their power back. After buying a Black Wing head from a guy called Stefan that apparently has made a little side hustle selling his old uniforms we can sneak into the mine and destroy the device. And back at the secret plaza our instructor is pleased with our accomplishments and rewards us with a job change. But let's head back to Illinel. And we are done. Illinel took me 29 minutes. This was together with the job change though. Like always I'm gonna start for the equip we got until now and then do Rian straight next. I made a quick stop at the storage so I can use the legendary circulator we got from the 6 star reward. Thirty-five luck. Okay, the five percent damage to normal monsters is nice while leveling, though. And we got the legendary ability already unlocked for the future. But let's finally do Rien. It's already getting late. Rien is also done, and it only took me twenty-four minutes. And I decided that I'm gonna grind to level hundred before I head to bed. Because why not? While I do this, let me explain a little bit more about Blaster's mechanics. Like earlier told, Blaster has two types of resources. Bullets are one of these resources, and they are used for some attacks and have to be reloaded if they run empty. This happens by itself but takes a moment. Using bullets with our attacks then fills our second resource bar, the dynamo gouge. This gouge lets us use the attack bunker buster explosion which deals damage depending on our gauge meter. Once used the gauge meter has to cool down again but this increases the damage of our main attack skills. Like any combo class blaster relies on animation cancels to maximize their damage. However their animation cancels are done differently rather than using one attack after another like on our car for example Blaster relies on charge skills to cancel the animation of their attacks. Their gameplay revolves a lot around two of these skills, bobbing and weaving. One of the main combos we can perform is called the no reload combo. This combo involves using both magnum punch and double blast which are powered by revolving cannon and would use two bullets. But thanks to a charge bobbing or weaving we can cancel double blasts animation and reload the ammo lost from using revolving cannon. Then we want to 
to cancel the bobbing or weaving depending on which was used with the jump. When done correctly you can continuously attack without delay and use these two attacks without ever running out of ammo, that's also why it's called the no reload combo. Shotgun Punch is the second combo we can access when we are done with the 4 drop advancement. Between the two blaster combos this one is easier to learn but also way harder to master, at least in my opinion. Shotgun Punch doesn't require a fully charged bobbing or weaving to cancel its animations, so performing the combo is a bit simpler in terms of keyboard inputs. Bunker Buster Explosion as well as Hammer Smash, another important attack that increases your final damage against a debuff target, can be woven into these combos leading to a very satisfying gameplay if done right. But I finally reached level 100, this took me 26 minutes without any XP buffs other than runes. Now let's do the next drop advancement. Back at the secret plaza we are informed that our instructor has gone missing while he was trying to investigate rumors of a new weapon that Gallimer was creating for the Black Wings. We are now tasked to rescue our instructor and disguise ourselves to once again sneak into the Verne mines. There we run into Gallimer and have to convince him that we are a loyal member of the Black Wings so he would give us his keycard. This turned out to be successful and we used the keycard to enter the laboratory and discover a secret prison where our instructor is being held. He explains that the secret weapon is a poison gas generator and we destroy it before we escape together with our instructor. Back at the plaza we are then rewarded with a job change. And now that we are level 100 I'm gonna head to bed and continue tomorrow. There I am and I'm back on the main again because the second chapter of the sixth star event started today. Like the first chapter this one seems to be easy to complete by just playing our main and our burning character some more. A lot of these challenges are about using nodes or about star forcing equipment so I will probably be able to complete most if not all of them. I don't know about the one where we have to star force an item to 22 stars though. For completing this chapter we get a fake dominator pendant with 15 stars and a unique potential. This one can also not be enhanced like the other event stuff. But I'm not really sure if I should use it on this character or on a future boss mule so let me know what you guys would do down in the comments. We also get 1200 nodes, these nodes will be a huge boost to our damage and I'm gonna use at least half of them on this character as soon as I get them. Additionally we get a trade boost potion, a unique potential scroll and a mount and the challenge rewards itself aren't that bad either. Further on Slime Ceiling Spy event also ended and now we have Waves Challenge Week. This is a Punch King event we can participate in and get points depending on how many vegetables we are able to beat in a given time. Every 1000 points or so we can claim some more coins for the event store. And for 5000 points we get a chair, I'm gonna do this daily so I'm able to get all the rewards from this event. And 1000 points, nice, we won't go any further though because the carrot seems to be very tough. And for completing this little mini game, we are rewarded with 500 coins, this is pretty nice. I'm also gonna spend some more boss coins and buy 15 more flames and I'm gonna throw them at my Fafnir pants. 11 flames later and I got this potential over here, not the best but it barely fits my needs and I'm gonna keep it for now. 15.2k start and 2.2 mil range, I believe we are soon ready to face Damien and Lotus. I'm gonna throw the remaining flames on the top and see what we get. And of course we got nothing, ok let's hop back on the blaster. I'm gonna start out by doing normal Zakum to get some easy levels as long as we are still able to as this will be nerfed soon and we won't get much XP from killing Zakum at all. So if you guys want to use the Zakum tech where you place a bunch of mules at Zakum and just do the arms use it while you still can. I don't like the strut that much though, it's kinda boring to me and I don't really mind the normal leveling process. To continue leveling I'm just gonna use the maps from the the Marple Guide like with the other characters we done before, so I probably won't show this part as it's nothing new. Come on, oh yeah, 10 star forces in a row are done. Ok ok, we are level 127 and I decided I'm gonna grind a bit over here in Lion King's castle. Now we are level 130. I really want to get all the familiar cards from this zone to unlock the badge for this character as well as my main. That's why I'm gonna go for two cards each. 
Cool, cool, cool. We are done. This took me an hour and 20 minutes, but now I can already equip two familiars on this character when I start to play him in the future. I even got the ignore enemy defense familiar on this character and we of course can also unlock the badge on our main as soon as I bank the cards and use them on him. But let's continue grinding. It's another hour later and we are level 160 and I totally forgot that I can claim the root abyss set. I also collected a lot of gear while leveling and now I'm gonna starforce the stuff some more and see if we can maybe complete some more challenges for the 6th star event. Thanks to the level of this equipment this should be relatively cheap. Nice Arino, I managed to already complete 3 challenges just with the stuff I got on my blaster. The hardest one was probably the 10 consecutive star forces but I had that one done before I even catch the 100 stars. I'm not gonna claim the scroll for now, but I will use the other stuff and gonna throw the flames on the Fafnir top. Never lucky, let's hop back on the blaster. Before I continue to level, I'm gonna first finish another challenge. This one was also pretty easy. I just transposed all the stuff I used for the other challenges over to higher tier stuff that I also found while leveling. I will claim the notes we get as reward on my Kali, but for now let's continue grinding. And we are done, my blaster is level 200 or level 202 to be exact. I already went ahead and did the 5th job change as this is the same for every class and this whole process from level 166 to level 202 took me around 1 hour and 40 minutes. We also don't have to do the vanishing journey questline again, we can just skip it and are at the point where we could do our dailies. But this way we won't get the experience for the quests. If we decide to skip the story we get to see a short summary of it. This would have been very helpful for when I did my summary back in episode 2. But now that we done the first questline to unlock the arcane symbol, we are able to claim the burning reward for reaching level 200. This reward contains 50 node stones and one arcane symbol already leveled up to level 5. Sadly these node stones aren't account bound so I can't give them to my Kali and just will use them on my blaster. I hopped back on my Kali and just used the notes we got from the challenge reward and we can level up some more boost notes. That's also it for today though, I'm gonna head to bed now. There I am again, I already did my dailies and today we get another event ring from the stamps I collected so far while participating in the Wong Restaurant event. I'm gonna pick the Glory Guard ring, they all have the same stats and we already have the Reboot Awake ring. I also gonna buy the legendary potential scroll from the event store. If I'm right we still should get enough coins to also buy the 17 star scroll near the end of the event. I believe this way we get the most value out of it. Let's see, do we have to cupid? Yes we have. The event rings will be drop gear in the future but for now I would rather take main start. From the remaining 800 coins I'm gonna buy event cubes and see if we can hit something good. And nothing, but I still have two solid cubes from random events. Nope, one more though. 21% luck, perfect, on the last cube this ring is done. Let's put this thing on and see our gains. And we just got 500 stat and 100k range from this single ring upgrade, that's pretty good. I am now gonna lock back on my blaster to get some quick level ups by using some more event tickets. And he's level 211 and I can claim the next burning reward. The reward contains another symbol that's already level 5 and the eternal flame ring. This one already comes with a unique potential and has the same stats like our other event rings. Let's use some of the green cubes I got while leveling and try to get something good. Nope. And still nothing. Two lines already, I guess my blaster is pretty lucky. 
Before I forget, let's also go over Blaster's Legion block and Link skill. His Legion block gives Ign no enemy defense and the percentage we get depends on his level. His Link skill is called Spirit of Freedom. For leveling a resistance member to level 120, this skill gives us 2 seconds of invincibility after being revived. We can level the skill all the way up to level 8. This can be done by leveling the remaining resistance members to level 120. Let's continue and skip through the reverse city quest line so we get more symbols when we start to do our dailies on the sky. And it's done. Now I'm gonna do the True True Island questline and then we're gonna claim our symbol from the burning event. Of course I will also use the story skip function for this questline. True True Island is also done. Let's claim the symbol. Now that we have also equipped this symbol, my blaster is exactly at 4k start and 300k range. I also gonna use the honor I got so far and try to get another inner ability. Maybe we get boss damage. No boss damage, but 19% item drop rate. I guess I'm gonna keep that for now. Before I can lock onto my Kali, there's still one more thing I have to do. And done, I had to get my mustache and some pets. I used Wonder Berries for the pets. This cash shop item gives us a random pet, and since there were no other seasonal pets in store, I went with them. I also got a new hairstyle, but I'm not really sure about that one. I'm gonna keep it for now though. Now I'm gonna lock back onto my main. Today was also the weekly boss reset, and I want to fight Princess No so we can get the secondary weapon. There we go, this one is a little bit stronger than the level 100 one we got while leveling. I'm just gonna use a raw potential scroll and cube it to epic with mystical cubes. And it's epic, this took me 27 cubes. Now let's use the hard cubes I have and try to get this thing to unique. Okay, on the second cube, not bad. No good stats though, I'm gonna buy some glowing cubes and see if we can get something good. I want to ignore enemy defense, attack percent and boss damage if possible. I'm just gonna buy 10 cubes at a time. One eternity later. Okay, I bought 30 cubes at the end and we got absolutely nothing. We have 7 cubes left and I finally hit ignore enemy defense again. I'm just gonna stop for now. That's also probably it for today. Tomorrow is another work day. And another day. Today will be a short one though. I have to get up early and it's already pretty late. I finished my dailies and now I'm gonna do my remaining weekly bosses. I just saw there's a miracle time happening tomorrow and this will be for all accessories as well as emblems. That's also why I'm doing my weekly bosses so early in the week. I probably won't show them again because we already gone through them all but if something interesting happens I'm gonna of course let you guys know. Hey, we cleared Chaos Vellum in under 5 minutes, nice. I still have to die less though. We are done and for selling all the weekly boss crystals together with my daily crystals we gonna get 800 million mesos, nice. This means we got 3 builds to spend for the miracle time tomorrow. Before I head to bed again I'm gonna give Hart Magnus a try, I believe we should have more than enough damage to burst him down. And I did it, I died a couple of times but at least I didn't use any buff freezers. He probably could have done this one quite some time ago. I'm gonna fight Hart Magnus again with the weaker character in the recent future so I can tell you guys a little bit more about this boss. But for now this at least gives us some extra meso to spare for tomorrow. And I also gonna do some more easy bosses on my blaster to get even more meso. Nice, we also did Easy Sickness, I never did this one on my Kali. I mean the easy version of this boss, we went straight for the normal one. If we now sell all the crystals, we got us a nice 50 million mesu extra for the event. Now it's time to go to bed, it's already way too late again. And here we are, miracle time just began and I'm gonna spend all my mesu to get as much gear as I can to legendary. I won't go for good lines though, at the moment I just want to tear stuff up. I'm gonna buy 30 cubes at a time and we are gonna start Start with the emblem. There we go, the emblem is already done and it just took 17 cubes. Next I'm gonna do my rings. As earlier mentioned I want to keep the event rings as well as treasure hunter John's ring and turn them into drop gear at a later point. Let's begin with the reboot awake ring. Okay, not even unique, that's pretty sad, let's buy 30 more cubes. 
and 31 cubes in and it's unique. Let's see if we get the legendary potential soon. Nope, let's buy another 30 cubes. Cool, cool, cool. The Reboot Awake Ring is legendary as well and it took me 46 cubes in total. Next is the Noble Iphias Ring. Ooh, just 3 cubes and it's already unique. No more tee-ups with the remaining cubes though, let's buy some more. Nice Serino, the ring is also legendary and we only took 20 cubes. Treasure Hunter John's ring is next and it's already unique after 7 cubes. If we are lucky and still have some meso left over, we even can try to get some good lines at the end. And the ring is done, it only took 17 cubes to finish, that's pretty good. I'm gonna do the earrings next, I don't know why but every time I played this game I'm always unlucky when it came to enhancing earrings, so let's hope this won't continue on this character. Okay. Okay, nice, this already looks good. And I'm out of cubes again, so let's buy 30 more. Cool, 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 already legendary and this only in 11 cubes. I just hope my bad luck don't move to another item. Next I'm gonna do my Machinator Pendant. It's a shame I haven't got my Dominator Pendant as well, but what can you do? 15 cubes to unique, still okay I guess. Can we finish it before we have to buy more cubes though? Nope, and we already spent close to 2 bill. I'm actually not that sure if I can finish all the stuff. And another 15 cubes later, the pendant is also legendary. This one took me exactly 30 cubes. Now the last two items, the face accessories. These ones will be also drop and meso gear in the future. Additionally, the replacements for the slots are boss drops with a pretty low drop chance, so we could still have to wear these face accessories for quite some time anyways. Okay, 13 cubes and the face tattoo is unique. Can we get another tier up? No, we can't. Let's buy another 30 cubes. We already spent 26 cubes on this thing and I'm gonna switch to the energy crystal for now. I'm kinda afraid we won't be able to finish both items, so I'm gonna try to at least get them to unique. Awesome, this one is at least also unique and it only took 7 cubes. And I couldn't finish it with the remaining cubes, so I have to buy new ones. Money really gets low, we are at 410 mil and I guess this means we won't cube for lines, I just hope we can finish the two items. And on the first cube we get the tier up, the energy crystal is done and took 22 cubes to get to legendary. Let's see if we can finish the other freaking thing. Oh dang, this face tart already ate up 55 cubes, but I guess that's how it is. Let's buy the last 30 cubes before I have to get to my meso reserves. Come on, please. OMG, 85 cubes and still nothing. Let's get some more meso. I have some banked I collected on my blaster and I can also sell the spell traces that we got so far while grinding. In addition, I can sell the philosopher stones I got from dismantling equipment. Now we are back at 400 mil and can buy 30 more cubes. This can't be real. This dang item. 115 cubes and still no tea up. I'm gonna claim my money from Marple too early so we can maybe get some more tries. I also remembered that I can buy these mysterious meso pouches in the Silent Crusade store, so I'm gonna do this as well. Have 4k coins from our daily boss runs to spend. Oh, and by the way, you can open this shop by adding it to a keyboard shortcut via the keybinding menu. And after we used all the stuff, we are at 150 mil again and can buy 10 more cubes. As you probably can tell, I really want to get this tier up now. I can't be defeated by this face accessory. Oh man, now we are at 125 cubes down the drain. We still can get these meso pouches over here in the event store, so I'm gonna buy them and maybe we can get enough meso to buy 10 more cubes. It only was enough to buy 8 more cubes, but I hope these are the 8 cubes that will get us the tier up, so let's see if that's the case. We still can try again in the evening after I did Ursus and my daily boss run, but for now I have to work. I'm back, I already done Ursus and bought 10 more cubes, so let's see if we can finally finish this item. I haven't done my daily boss run yet, so we can try one more time after these ones, but if they also don't succeed, that's it. Of course it won't tear up, I'm gonna do my daily stuff now and then I'm gonna be back for the last cubing session, if I don't decide to grind for some more meso. 
I'm back, let's go straight into the cubing. You already know this is the last try for today, so please let me finish this. Oh, it's looking pretty dang bad. On the last cube? I can't believe it. I already thought I had to grind to get some more tries, but it's done. This freaking thing took me 148 cubes, but it's finally over and I'm now poor as hell. And of course we also lost some stats and range, but we can get this back pretty soon. I also skipped some tier ups for my symbols while I was saving for the miracle time, so I'm probably gonna stay poor for some time. But that's also it for today. Tomorrow is another work day and this means I have to go to bed now. And another day. This one will be a short one though. Sadly I have a lot of stuff to do at the moment. While I was doing my dailies I realized that my vac pad has run out. But thanks to the 6 star events first chapter we already have a new one prepared. I done all my dailies and the participation XP from the 6 star event will give us a level up. And we are level 237. I'm gonna do my weeklies today and we're gonna do as Pharah Guardian for the first time. The objective of this minigame is to destroy 10 dimensional gates with a big cannon. These gates are displayed in red on the minimap. Before we can shoot them though, we first have to power the cannon with Erda. This is done by defeating the mobs that are present on the left side of the map. This and Midnight Chaser are by far my favorite weeklies and I actually don't mind doing them. Runheim defense isn't that bad either, but I would gladly pass the other weeklies. And I'm done. I also have some Meso again from Ursus and my boss run, so let me upgrade these symbols. Nice Sereno, the Akana symbol is level 11 and Moras and Esfera are level 9 and 8. We are still not back at our old stats though, but this will happen pretty soon. I'm now gonna hop on my blaster and do my dailies as well as a boss run to get some extra meso. I finished my dailies and I haven't claimed the choo choo XP on my Kali and I'm now gonna claim it on my blaster. That way we get a level up for this guy. Now he's level 214. And I also decided to use some more event tickets to level him up again. Thanks to this we can claim the level 215 burning reward. This reward contains another 50 node stones. I hopefully get some more special nodes. I really want the 10 growth portions from the challenge reward. I opened them all up and just got one special node. Kinda sad, but at least we already have some nodes on the sky when I start to play him. I'm quickly gonna do a boss run and then I'm done with this character. This has to be a joke. I just got a black bean mark on my blaster from normal pink bean. Why can't this happen on my main? And I'm back on my main. To finish the day off I'm gonna train some accessory crafting. I got a primal essence while defeating a carrium. I'm not really sure when this happened though. At some point it just was in my inventory. I haven't got the achievement from gathering it though so it has to be from a carrium. But this means we now could make a master ring. I want to use the ring in the future and getting master in a profession is also a challenge for the 6 star event. Leveling this skill already seems a lot easier than leveling alchemy by the way. But that's also it for today. Tomorrow after work I finally have some free time again and then we are gonna start with the black heaven quest line. Okay I lied. I want to level up my heaven some more before I head to bed and I'm gonna do this by using some potions from the marple guide. I really would like to get this guy to level 200 while the event is still going, so I can use some event tickets to get him all the way up to level 210. This way his link skill would be level 3. If we are lucky these potions even could be enough to get us all the way to level 200, but I guess we are not lucky. Now I'm gonna head to bed though. It's a brand new day, work is done and I'm back on the grind. While I was logging in I saw that there's a MVP train happening and I thought it would be a good point to use a wealth potion and go for a 2 hour grinding session. We are at 348 million meso at the moment and have 5 nodes. Let's see what we can make in 2 hours. Thanks to my familiars, the advanced holy symbol skill and the wealth potion we are already over 67% drop rate. For this reason we get a 
miso bag every time we defeat an enemy. The two hours are done. I got like 280 million mesos, 11 nodes, as well as 36% experience. Not bad, I would say. Now I'm gonna do my dailies and my boss runs. I'm done with my daily stuff and decided that I'm now gonna use all the arcane symbols I got from the first chapter of the sixth star event. I'm gonna split these 1200 arcane stones evenly between Arcana, Esfera and Mores. This was suggested by one of you guys as these levels slower than the first three arcane symbols. And I used them all. Now we are at 16.6k start and 2.2 million range. Before I finally gonna start the Black Heaven quest line, I'm just quickly gonna hit level 10 of accessory crafting. I once again got two profession coupons from the secret drop in Root Abyss. Nice, this is also done, but now it's finally time to do the Black Heaven quest line. We start this epic quest line in the conference room of the Alliance. This place can be reached throughout the dimensional mirror. There we can speak with Mako, who gives us the option to begin the first chapter of this quest line. In the first chapter, Secret of the Wings, we are on a mission to rescue 10 boogies who was captured by the Black Wings while investigating their activities. Together with the three PO siblings, Dolphy, Goopy and Lappy, we parachute down near the entrance of Verna Mine. There we fight our way throughout several Blackwing guard robots and a miniboss called Dargot the Giant. After we climb the wires of a giant electrical panel, we reach the room where 10 boogies is being held. As we quickly free her, she reveals to us that we walked straight into a trap. Now we have to escape, so we don't get pulverized and after we barely make it out, we jump off the edge of a cliff into our airship and return to our reef. The next day, Ninehut escorts us to the conference pavilion and on the way he congratulates us to our successful mission. At the pavilion, Athena Purse explains to us that the Black Mage indeed has come back and we are questioning why he hasn't made a move yet. We come to the conclusion that he's not fully regained his powers and that we should focus on the Black Wings for now, as they have been created to revive the Black Mage and this would delay his rise to power. Einhard explains that the Black Wings used the Edelstein newspaper in order to communicate by using coded messages. Further on, 10 boogies managed to solve Galimir's latest message that just said Black Heaven is ready. Not sure what this is about, we meet the resistance at the secret plaza to see Orchid. She apparently is still in a coma after being attacked by the evolution system and as one of the Blackwing's wingmasters she would definitely know more. After a short argument between the resistance and the signet knights, Grendel the really old arrives and with him he brings a magic mirror. I guess magic mirrors are a huge thing in this game, we just had one back at the Aspera questline and now we have this one. One. Anyways, Grendel explains that we can access the memories of another person with this thing and now we of course have to do this. There we encounter a rabbit plushie to guide us throughout Orchid's memories. These are also guarded by jelly monsters. We first encounter a memory where we witness Orchid and Lotus still in their ghost form. Then we see how they are granted their human forms by the white mage in exchange to help him research the darkness. In the next memory, we witness how Lotus and Orchid cause the death of Arya, the former empress of Erev. As the memory slowly fades away, the little bunny plushie tells us that Lotus has crossed the line by killing Arya under the guise of a peace conference. Before we enter the next memory, we are told that this one is a particularly painful one for Orchid. In it, we see how they are defeated by Phantom in their battle in the Temple of Time. Furious about her loss, Orchid vows to bring her lost brother back to life. Next we enter the last memory, where we witness Galimir asking for Orchid's approval to build Black Heaven, a giant airship with the power to destroy the whole Marple world. This was what we were looking for and we report this newly acquired information back to the Alliance. Cygnus then decides to face them in air combat to show the Marple world that the Alliance could protect them. The chapter ends with Galimir who talks to Hilla and Akarium about also becoming a commander of the Black Mage if his mission would be successful. 
And this was the first part of the questline. I never saw the three little birds from the beginning before, but they seem to know us quite well. Besides this, we learned a lot of new stuff. The next chapter begins with a cutscene that is exclusive for each class and even Carly has got their own. There we once again meet Nile and remember everything we went through in the tutorial questline. We also remember our goal to defeat Epsilon and set off to the Lumiere, Phantom's airship. This has been upgraded to become battle ready for the upcoming fight against Black Heaven. Under Cygnus' command, we then take off to fight the Black Heaven head on. The preparations are complete. All right, Lumiere. Let's go! Okay, that voice just ruined the whole cutscene. On the ship, we again have to solve some arguments between the Resistance members and the Cygnus Knights, who aren't really get along that well. As we head back to the conference room to report an unusually thick fog, we run into Cygnus and Claudine, who are already aware of the fog, and discuss how this would be an advantage for the enemy. Cygnus now tells us about Barak, the master of the skies, who would be likely to cause chaos around the ship. We are now tasked to look for Nineheart, as Cygnus hasn't seen him for quite a while. We soon encounter him standing over a wounded doppelganger of himself, but immediately recognize that the standing Nineheart must be the fake one, as the real one would never win a fight on his own. Now Barok shows his true face, but we quickly defeat him. Then he transforms into Cygnus though, making us unable to hurt him and we are knocked out. After we awake, we are tied to a barrel together with Nineheart, and now we have to work together to break the barrel and hurry back to warn the rest of the Alliance. To our shock, the ship already has been boarded by the Blackwing's androids. And after fighting another Blackwing member, Eleanor the Black Witch, we regroup with the three little birds at the deck and begin to fight the remaining androids. Suddenly, Barok returns in a fighter plane, but we are able to crash his ship, and just then, Hiver arrives in a large airship, which we recognize as Black Heaven. The ship starts to barrage us with rockets, but eventually we manage to succeed and destroy it. As we already start to celebrate the victory of the Alliance, a dark shadow starts to loom over our heads. The Black Heaven appeared, swarmed by hundreds of smaller airships we just fought. Now we retreat into the clouds for cover and try to come up with a new plan. As tension starts to build up between the Alliance and the Resistance members, we hear a noise and start to investigate. We discover dozens of puppets that must be sent by Francis the Puppeteer. After engaging Francis, he manages to escape to the deck of the ship. Back at the deck of the ship, we discover his attempt to flee in a barrel. After we finally manage to capture him, he demands that we release Orchid. He claims that she is now helpless after her powers had been stolen by Lotus and now he tries to trade the blueprints of the Black Heaven for her release. Nynard accepts the offer and takes the blueprints, although telling him that he could only see her after the war was over. This also ends the second act. It gave us some interesting insight about the whole conflict between the Resistance and the Cygnus Knights. Pretty interesting in my opinion. The next act begins as we try to come up with a plan to combat the Black Heaven. Thanks to the blueprints, Nynard could come up with two critical weaknesses. His massive size that would be inevitably create blind spots to attack and that it only had one centralized power source. With these two weaknesses in mind, we come up with a plan to infiltrate Black Heaven and destroy it from the core. As we going into detail about the plan, Mihil rushes into the meeting and warns us about the incoming ballistic attack. Empress, we're under attack! <gasps> We receive heavy damage, but try to get a better view of the situation at the deck of the ship. There we learn that the underside of the ship was also hit hard and rushed there to rescue the soldiers that had been knocked out. After we rescued all the soldiers, we hear the voice of Francis, who is still trapped in a burning prison room. Against the advice of the resistance soldiers, we free Francis anyways and head to the pilot house because the whole ship is starting to lean. 
There we have to defeat some more black wings and struggle to get the ship back under our control but then Kieran arrives and takes over the wheel. Upon returning to the prison we found that the soldier was defeated by Francis who is now missing. Mistakes were made but we still had the mission to do and now we head back to the deck where we meet with some of the resistance members. There we first have to gather some materials from the attacking androids before we can use the repaired airships to start our attack. After going through another fun little minigame we arrive at the Black Heaven. There we hear Gallimir's voice telling us that he already was expecting us. The resistance members suddenly crashed into the shield immobilizing them in place just as several cannons start to shoot them down. We rush back to the airship of the Alliance and inform them about the failed mission and there Claudine gets furious about the missing resistance leaders and blames the Alliance for the loss of her friends. She also accuses us to be the reason that Gallimir had been able to discover our plans and that only because we freed the poor little Francis. Then she demands that we are put on trial to answer for our actions and soon after we stand before a jury of sickness knights and resistance men. We try to defend ourselves but at the end decide to leave. This way the resistance members and the Cygnus knights could at least go on with their fight against the Black Heaven. Cygnus tries to stop us but we explain to her that's the only way the others could focus to fight on. As we fly back we learn that the Cygnus knight who's escorting us was actually one of Francis' puppets. Throughout his puppet he thanks us for his rescue and ensures us that he's not the reason our plan has failed. Further on he reveals that Black Heaven is controlled by Lotus who has been turned into a Xernoid by Gallimir. Together with the stolen powers from Orshild, Black Heaven now acts like an extension of Lotus own body and because of this there are no weaknesses or blind spots. He also reveals that there are no troops stationed aboard so they have to be summoned from somewhere else. Filled with determination we conclude that there is still a way to infiltrate the Black Heaven and turn the ship around to set sail for Edelstein. Here also ends the third part of the storyline. Pretty exciting so far but let's continue. The next chapter begins with us arriving at the Edelstein scrapyard. There we once again meet up with our little bird friends who also give us a letter from Cygnus and there she writes that she still believes in us. On our way deeper into the scrapyard we meet a friendly android named One Eye and he helps us to escape to his hidden camp. At the camp we meet his wife's three hands and explain our situation. After learning about everything One Eye explains to us that the only way to get into the Black Haven is to scale the tower in the middle of the scrapyard. There is a teleporter that would get us access but only if we wear a helm with a special computer chip that only androids possess. Then the daughter of the two androids Bitterbot appears to tell us that our efforts are in vain. A pretty fitting name for this little robot by the way. We collect the necessary parts and finish the helm allowing us to climb the tower and use the teleporter. And I must say having so many dashes was pretty handy for this part. One Eye and his family were watching us scale the tower from some distance as Bitterbot claims that we still have no hope to defeat her father, taking her helmet off and revealing herself to be Beryl. We gonna see her again in the Xenon questline. Upon arriving at the inspection station we are quickly discovered and have to fight several Blackwing forces. Under them are Dargard and Eleanor again who try to capture us. They have no chance though and we seize control of a demolisher, blast through several defenses and create a hole in the shields. We fire a signal flare to show the alliance that we have given them an opening but then we are chased by immense pulverizer that corners us at the edge of the ship. Just as we also seem to be pulverized Claudine arrives and begins to give us cover. As she was struggling the resistance members from earlier appeared who had miraculously survived Gallimir's attack and with their combined firepower they destroyed the pulverizer. 
We were knocked out again because of the explosion and awake to see that the Alliance had successfully boarded the Black Heaven thanks to the pilot Irvin. Meanwhile, Francis managed to infiltrate the secret plaza in Edelstein and successfully rescued Orchid. They immediately set off to save Lotus and destroy Gallimere, ending Chapter 4. Now we at least have some backstory about the whole scrapyard region and why this one eye guy calls us squishy all the time. The fifth chapter begins with us entering the Black Heaven together with Irvin and Nineheart. They already plotted the most direct route to the core and together with the resistance members and Athena, we take the elevator down. While we were taking the elevator, Irvin tells us that over 50 years ago he was an officer in the Edelstein Air Force, working alongside an admiral called Martini and Gallimere, who back then was a military scientist. After learning that Martini had commissioned experiments on living subjects though, Irvin left the military out of protest. We traverse deeper into Black Heaven and run into Orchid and Francis. There Orchid recognizes us as the one who was inside her mind. Suddenly, Gallimere appears on a flat screen and shows Lotus to Orsha to rub in the fact that he now is a puppet. Lotus now manifests a pulverizer to drop down onto the elevator, scattering us throughout all different levels. Of course, we were stuck with Orsha, and in order to get through the doors that were blocking our way, we had to work together. After some minigames, we finally reached the last door, where Orchid of course went on without us. We were left behind surrounded by a horde of androids and as we seem to be overwhelmed the alliance arrives to save us. Now we venture deeper into the black heavens and close to the core we find hundreds of large bombs guarded by Xernoids. Even deeper into the ship we notice a strange green gas penetrating the further we go on and requiring us to wear gas masks. Soon we find the dying Admiral Martini who begs us to stop Gallimere. He further explains that he had been dying from an incurable illness and that Gallimere had offered him a solution. However, now he sees that Irvin had been right to leave and then passes away from the toxic fumes. By going through Gallimere's notes we learn that he was researching sealed stones and Lotus body. It detailed how he had lied about Orchid about promising to return Lotus to her and the other commanders of the Black Mage about promising to alter Lotus body to serve as a vessel for the Black Mage. He also found out that even if one sealed stone existed, the Black Mage wouldn't be able to fully regain his power and that the Black Wings have collected all sealed stones except the sealed stone that is in possession of Sickness herself. Further on, he writes that after Lotus was completed, he ordered him to steal Orchid's powers, and then he went into detail how he created the evolution system to imprint combat data onto Lotus, making him even stronger. We also uncover that the bombs contain a chemical that would turn humans into puppets and these would be controlled by Lotus in a hive mind. This all leads us to the conclusion that Gallimere's target is bombardment rather than invasion. And now we are tasked to stop Gallimere with the help of Athena while the others go back to formulate a plan. We venture up to the core but Gallimere already anticipates our arrival and breaks the elevator causing Athena to fall also ending this chapter. Now Act 6 begins and this also is the final chapter. We press on to finally find Lotus, there we engage into battle with the story version of him. He then manages to break free from his connections to the Black Heaven and uses his full wingmaster powers against us. We manage to defeat him but Gallimere gets frustrated and orders Lotus to get up and continue fighting, powering him up all the way near his breaking point. Just then Orchid arrives in order to calm her brother and everything seems to go well but then Gallimere, unable to abit his creation rebelling against him, uses the kill switch on Lotus. Orchid now holds her dying brother in her hands and we rush to the control room in order to stop Gallimere once and for all. But then Gallimere releases some more of the poisonous gas into the room leaving us unable to fight. He then shows us a screen where we see that Black Black Heaven is already looming over Edelstein and starts to release his bombs. 
The situation seems grim, but Orshield uses the last of the Wingmaster's power in order to levitate the bombs back into the air around the Black Heaven before causing them all to detonate yeah, at once. I won't let you do this. In the meantime, we are mocked by Gallimir, who destroys the antidote for the poison in front of our face. Then he orders the Cernoids to restrain us, while he bots the escape pod, activating the self-destruction function on every Cernoid while he was leaving. The androids don't want to be left by their daddy though, and beg him to take them with him, while they crawl onto the escape pod. With our last energy, we fire the escape pod off for good, and see Gallimir finally dying in an explosion. Ready to die with the toxin flooding our system, we get rescued at the last second by Orshit and upon reaching the upper deck, Athena Purse takes over and we escape onto Phantom's airship. At the same time, Orshit and Francis escape together and she silently bid farewell to her brother. Back at the airship, everyone mourns as we seem to most likely die from the toxin. Cygnus, however, declares that we would live and pulled out the last seal stone. Nineheart then asks if Cygnus understood what would happen if the last seal stone would break. But Cygnus reminded everyone that Freud had created these stones in order to help to protect what is most precious to the people. With full support of the Alliance, Cygnus then uses the seal stone in order to save us. Now, we become the vessel for the seal stone and this is probably also the point when we became the adversary, like we are always called in the Arcane River story. Back to life, we speak with all Alliance members and as we reach Nineheart, we are once again reminded that now that the last seal stone is gone, there's nothing that would stop the Black Mage from regaining its power and that the final battle of the Marple world was now drawing closer. Finally, we speak to Cygnus, who tells us that she is glad that the war is over and that she is looking forward for the next meeting, whatever the reason may be. As the people of the world celebrate our victory, Akarim reports Galimir's defeat to the Black Mage. He ignores his words and tasks Damien and his demon army to carry out their next move. This is also where the story ends and we now finally have unlocked Lotus while completing it. The whole thing took me 3 hours by the way, but I also read through everything and watched every cutscene. All in all, I would say the whole thing was a pleasant surprise, I never done the questline before and I wasn't expecting something like this. The sun is already rising again though and this means I should probably head to bed now. Here we are again and today the last weekly event for the Wong restaurant began. This one is called Goodbye Last Order and to get the rewards we just have to hunt 1000 mobs a day. This will probably happen anyways while I do my dailies, so it's a pretty simple task. There are some pretty cool rewards and the last one is a title that gives us a nice amount of stats for a whole month. I'm gonna try to use this one when my tasty buff is gone, so we won't lose that much ignore enemy D 
defense and boss damage. And there is a MVP train happening now, so I am gonna do a little grinding session again. We are pretty close to a level up and I believe I can finish the remaining XP while the train is still going on. Okay, okay, the buff stopped 5 minutes ago, but I just grinded the last bit without any XP buff. Nice, now we are level 238. I continue grinding till the rune is gone and then I'm gonna do my daily stuff. I also finished the Asphera badge while doing my dailies, so we have this one unlocked as well. Next I'm gonna train another character to level 150, because the Burninator coupon I just recently got will run out soon and I definitely don't want this to happen. I'm gonna do Luminous next, he's another of the 5 hero classes that initially sealed away the black mage and has a pretty nice link skill. During their battle Luminous absorbed a trace of the black mage's dark power and this power is now three threatening to consume him. Centuries after we awake in the forest of Elenia, there we meet a girl named Lania and her talking cat Penny. We soon think the world is at peace and decide to settle down together with Lania. But then one day our power breaks out and we destroy our home and hurt Lania in the process. At this point we can choose between two paths, light and dark. I went with light because if we would take the dark one we would just let the poor Lania die. This choice grants us light light affinity or dark affinity respectively, which increases the damage of the chosen element. This can be changed once we reach the fourth job though. So we resist the power of darkness and save Lania and after we repaired everything we decide to go on a journey to find a way to remove the darkness inside of us. At this point the tutorial is over and we are also free to go where we please. To get to level 30 I just went with my usual maps. This took me not even 5 minutes and the job change was also done in some clicks. Luminous uses a balance of light and dark magic. Upon reaching the second job there is a UI which depicts an empty orb and if we use a skill light or dark the orb begins to fill. Once the orb is full it will activate eclipse and vice versa sunfire increasing our damage. And at third job we also unlock another state, equilibrium. If this state is active we are able to spam some strong attacks without any cooldown and also do some good amount of extra damage. To level this character up I used the same maps as earlier and just grinded all the way to level 150. This took me nearly 3 hours. Thanks to this though we now have access to Luminous Link skill. At level 2 it increases our ignore enemy defense by 15% and this will be pretty handy for the upcoming fight against Lotus. His legion block only gives us intelligence though so it isn't that handy. But this is also it for today, I have some more stuff to do and probably won't be back until the daily reset already happened. There we are again and today we finally face Lotus. I already spent a lot of time in the practice mode and I'm pretty sure today is the day I'm finally gonna beat him. We are gonna start the day by using some of the notes I have collected so far and with them I'm gonna try to level up my 5th drop skills. I also have unlocked the second reward for the weekly event. This one contains an outfit that I'm gonna use on my blaster. Okay, I don't know what I think about this, but at least it was free. Cool, 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 the dailies are done and now it's time that I try to get at least some of my potentials back. I'm gonna start with my emblem, I won't ignore enemy defense, attack percent and boss damage if possible. We're gonna do glowing cubes again and I'm gonna buy 10 cubes at a time. And nothing, let's buy 10 more. Ooh, okay, I guess I'm gonna keep that. We don't got any boss damage, but for now this should be fine. Let's use the remaining cubes on my secondary. Today is also the weekly boss reset, so I can do all my bosses again. This way we should definitely be able to at least get some good potentials. Okay, nothing with the remaining cubes. You already know I'm gonna buy some more till we get it, so let's go. 
Nice Arena that's no attack percent but the other stats are so good this one is a keeper. We don't have any more meso left though so I have to do my weekly bosses again before I can try to get the remaining potentials. But before I'm gonna do my bosses again I will go ahead and unlock the player housing. This feature gives us the option to customize our own home and with it we can also access our caretaker. He is able to buff us once a day. The strength of the buff itself depends on how good your relationship is. To increase it we simply have to talk to our caretaker once a day. So this has to be done over time. I have done this mainly for the boss damage buff but I also really like to collect stuff so I enjoy this feature a lot. Ok ok we have the housing stuff sorted out now I'm gonna do all my weekly bosses and then we are gonna try to get our potentials back. I'm done and we are back at 800 million meso so let's do some more cubing so we at least get some valuable stats on our gear. I already bought some glowing cubes so let's begin with treasure hunter John's ring. For now I will only touch items that have less than 9% luck or all stat. And the ring is already fine. Next is the noble Ifia ring. Ok I guess we are gonna be done pretty soon, we even got some drop chance. Let's do the earrings next. Ok sad, I have to buy 10 more cubes. Uh, not the best lines but I guess it's fine for now, we at least are back at 9%. I'm getting there, the machinator pendant is next. And also done, just 2 cubes. Now the last item, the Zakum face accessory. And of course it took all the remaining cubes but at least we have a main start line again. Let's see our stats again now that we have got our potentials back. Dang we got a lot of stats. We are at 18.3k luck and 3.1 mil range. Now we should be definitely able to fight Lotus. Our ignore enemy defense is also over 90% and we don't even got our familiar buff. But now it's time. Lotus has 3 phases, each phase has their own health bar and only after we beat every single one the fight is done. In the first part of the battle Lotus is still connected to Black Heaven. This phase we have to dodge a rotating laser while we also have to avoid the falling debris that will stun us for 1 second if we get hit. The laser one shots you by the way and can turn its direction, speed up or slow down at random. To dodge it we have to use the 2 teleporters on top of the map. We also also could use a well timed dash to dodge it but I got used to the teleporters pretty fast. In addition the dynamo robots that spawn will debuff you with different effects if you get hit. This phase is a bit annoying but I was able to do it after some practice. Phase 2 and 3 are very similar and are in my opinion a lot less tricky than the first one. The second part of the fight Lotus will start to move around and he also gets a push attack. This isn't a one shot but it can be quite dangerous if you get pushed at the wrong time. The most dangerous attack in this part of the fight is the lightning attack. This one is indicated by falling platforms, we have to jump on them so we don't get one shot by the lightning attack. If a platform hits us though it will be destroyed. Besides from this he can summon a large blue energy ball that does around 20% damage if it touches us. Like already told the third phase is pretty similar to the second one. In addition he now gets a purple energy ball attack where he flies in the air and shoots the battlefield with purple balls. The impact is indicated and and you have more than enough time to dodge but if you get hit you are one shot. Additionally to the normal rubble he now will also summon a pulverizer from time to time. This one is also a one shot if you get hit. And after a good amount of tries I was finally able to beat Lotus in 18 minutes and that for the first time ever. <laughs> Sorry for the German though but I thought I give you guys the genuine reaction. I always stopped playing before I got to this point so I was pretty excited. My fiance also was happy that I was finally done as she sat beside me and watched Boku no Hero Academy the whole time. 
I waited a short moment so I can re-equip the advanced holy symbol skill and also switch my familiar so we maybe can get more than one coin. I also gonna use a wealth potion and do a little grinding session after we done with this. Sadly we just get one core so we can't buy our first absolute piece just yet. There's still Damien though so maybe he will drop us more than one core. But my fellow mushroom enjoyers, I believe that's also a good point to end today's episode as this one is already quite long. We managed to take down Lotus this time and next episode we gonna for sure take down Damien and maybe even normal slime. Thanks again for all your nice comments and all your support guys, I really appreciate it. These episodes take a little bit of time to make so if you like what you see give them a thumbs up and if you aren't already subscribe to my channel. This way you won't miss a new episode. Until next time, Marple Cello out.